Hi everyone, it's Louise here from Chai Monster Productions. Um, I don't normally show my face, I normally hide behind the camera and maybe show you my hands at most, but um, I've been told that you'd like to see more process videos, so I thought I'd be brave and put myself out here um, and say hello. So today what I wanted to talk about and show you was how to invert an image. Um, so if you don't invert an image uh, when you before you carve it, it will be the wrong way round when you print it. So whatever you carve has to be the mirror image of the final print. So for instance here, I've got a photograph of my neighbour's dog, Alfie. He's probably not the best example to show you to demonstrate this because it doesn't, with some images, it matters less than others. So for instance, if it was writing, if you didn't invert the image, it would be back to front. Um, I'm going to invert Alfie anyway, just because his, his owners might notice the difference. But for instance, his tail here, if I didn't invert the image, it would be on the other side and any other features that he may have would be on the other side. So that's why you invert the image because Otherwise, it's the wrong way round. So it's all about mirroring it because when you carve it into the lino, that's the mirror image of the final print. So just to give you an example of what I'm talking about, here is my lino cut of Lewis Hamilton. Now I've done two lino cuts of Lewis Hamilton and the first one was a complete disaster because I made the rookie area error of forgetting to invert my image. So all the sponsors that they get in Formula One were the wrong way round. So I, I actually had to abandon it and I couldn't face doing it for another year. Um, but with this, if I show you the liner cut, you can see quite clearly there how the writing is all the mirror image of the finished print. Because when you put the liner cut down on the paper, it will do the, it will print the mirror image. So when you're thinking about your design and you're thinking about carving it into the lino, you have to have it the opposite way round from the way it should be, otherwise the finished item will be the wrong way round. Um, similarly, another example, which is probably less obvious to other people, but when I did my uh, print of um, Paul Heaton, I noticed he's got a tiny mole in, on the side of his temple, and if I hadn't inverted the image, it would have been on the other side of his head. Similarly, his ring there would have been on his opposite hand. Now, most people probably wouldn't be aware, but I would have known. So here's my picture of Alfie. Um, I've been asked, I've been commissioned to do a lino cut of Alfie. So for um, someone's birthday. So what I've got here is a nice piece of tracing paper, good old fashioned tracing paper. I'm gonna trace the image onto the tracing paper. And then when I need to transfer it onto the lino, all I'm gonna do is flip the tracing paper over and transfer the marks onto the lino and that way I've got a ready-made um, mirror image of it. So, there's my traced image of Alfie. Next thing I'm gonna do is transfer it onto the lino. So the other thing I should mention before I carry on is that I used quite a soft pencil to transfer the image. This one was a B um, or even a 2B might be quite good. Um, you want a lot of graphite onto the tracing paper so that when you flip it over and transfer it, it transfers onto the lino. To do the transferring onto the lino, I'll use a harder pencil. This one's an HB or even an H might be quite good um, just because it pushes the, the graphite onto the lino better. Before I start, I'll do some marks on the, the edge of the tracing paper just because I do not want, and inevitably it does, I do not want the tracing paper to move whilst I'm doing the tracing. So I just put those little marks on the tracing paper to make sure I can keep referring back to it and making sure it's in the right place.
So I've traced the image on. I'm going to take it off now. I don't know if you're able to see that. There is a faint image there of Alfie in pencil. So, I mean, nothing about lino printing is, is fast. It's a laborious process. The next thing I'll do is go over it with pen so that I can see it clearly before I carve it. So I'm going over the black bits in my black pen. Um, they're the bits that are going to remain when I do the carving. Um, another tip that I got from a, another printmaker was to use a white China graph pencil to go over the parts of the liner that I need to cut away, um, that are particularly important to cut away. Those are the bits that will um, be left white uh, when I actually print my liner cut. So here's my finished drawing on the lino. Um, you can see the black is the area that's going to be left. The white that I've done in China Graph Pencil is the bit that I'm going to be carving away. But if you compare it now to the original photo, you can see how I've done the mirror image of the original picture, which means that when I get around to printing it, it'll be the right way around. So I hope that's helped explain inversion and why it's important. And sometimes it's not necessary. If it's not necessary, then um, carbon paper, old, old typewriter carbon paper is your friend. Just place that between the lino and your image and you can trace through. And then you'll get a mirror image of what you actually started with um, when you finally print with it. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed my video. If you'd like to see more process videos, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on social media, Chai Monster Productions. Thank you.